Students, welcome. So glad to see that you've been able to tune in today. Based on your amazing feedback from last week's discussion, we're going to continue the trend. And this week, you're going to get to hear from your peers about what the word community means. Now, I pray that as you hear this discussion, that you would receive what you hear with an open heart, because I trust that God has something amazing to speak to you today. You guys be blessed by this. All right, guys. So uh, thank you all for being here. I know that uh, last week, as we were able to have our, our conversation, uh, we were able to hear from y'all, uh, maybe not you guys specifically, but from students, right, like your age. Uh, that really meant a lot to our students and community group. And so kind of what I was able to tell our community group is like the reason we want to do this is because we believe that God speaks to you, right, and that your experiences in life are valid. And your experiences in life can be used by God to help uh, inspire and help uh, other people really grow in their faith. And so we're going to continue having these kind of conversations uh, throughout the future, right? Uh, just as a part of BT students and stuff like that. So, so with that said, thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Okay. So last week we talked about quarantine. And uh, this week we're going to talk about community. And uh, community is kind of a weird word because... Uh, Y'all probably don't have the word community in your like everyday language, right? Um, but I think that's a great place for me to ask my first question is when I say the word community, what comes to mind? I feel like it's your extended family. Okay. Extended family like who though? I mean, if you want to give names, you can, but I like, don't, don't feel like you got to be like, all right, like Pablo, you know, like <laughs> Kanye. So no, like who, who, do you, who do you think about whenever you say your extended family? I feel like everybody from church, like at Sherry, like they're on my family, mm. extended family. What about you guys? Friends. Friends. Just friends. Friends is good. And the people you hang out with. Okay. Kind of people, everyday life, you're spending time with them. Right. Cool. Family. Family. Friends. friends. Church. 
church. That's usually the word they use at church community. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, let's be fair. And I mean, we, I talked to y'all about this already. Like, community is not really a word that you hear outside of church a lot. But it is something that we understand, at least in church. Like, it's going to mean our extended family, which means church people. It means our friends. It means our family. Really, kind of in a nutshell, it's the people that we kind of share life with. Now, shared life is also another church phrase that we use. You don't say that, but like it, to put it in like teenager language, what would y'all say that means? Like, what does it mean to share life with somebody? Um, who are the people you share life with? Who you know? I think uh, uh, shared life, like the same. You guys have the same experiences, or you have the same characteristics, or maybe even what's the word? Uh, you said characteristics, shared shared characteristics, shared experiences. Experiences and maybe even the same. Like values. Values, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and hobbies too, hobbies, maybe yeah. right? Like, uh, like y'all destroy me at Fortnite all the time. Okay. Like I would hate to say that like Fortnite's a hobby. It's not because I'm not good. Y'all make me want to give up? Oh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but, like, it's weird to think that, like, community can happen over video games. Right? But do y'all think that that could be some of your community, too? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, even people you don't see every day? Yep. It's kind of a weird question. I know that this could be scary, but, like, are there people you've met online that have been friends that you kind of stick with? Or do mm -hmm. y'all typically, like, stick with your, your friends from, from church or your friends from school that y'all play with? Stay with my friends from school because I feel like it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hear that. Uh, but it's like that too, like social media. Mm -hmm. Like you can make friends with people on the other side of the, the planet, right? Yep. And have, I'm going to say like, be careful. Obviously, I'll be the adult and I'll be that guy to say <laughs> like, don't just make friends with anybody that sends you a friend request. It's okay to deny people, right? Now, if the pastor in me is like, don't deny. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Uh but like you, you can build you can build a relationship, a community based around, and I like how you said it, Annette, uh, shared characteristics, shared experiences, values. shared values, shared hobbies, right? Uh, so that's all good. Community's good. I mean, I, at least I believe it's good. It's important for us. Uh, but here we are, same as last week, talking about quarantine. We've been kind of locked down, a crazy virus going around the world. It's been hard to have community. Uh, so I guess the question really is, has it been hard to find community in this time for you guys? And if so, why? Yes, because everybody feels isolated and everybody feels like there's no one there. Even though there's still people that want to be around them, they just feel like it's just all over. Yeah. Say, say that last part one more time because I thought that was really insightful. You said everybody, we want to be around people, but... Everybody just feels like it's all over. Like, what's all over? Because I know what you're saying, but I want to hear it. Like, friendships and, ex like, stuff they do together. Because we can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, it's, it feels like it's hard to share experiences whenever we're kind of... What the words used last week were isolated, trapped, limited. alone, and limited. I couldn't remember if it was limited. That was the other one. Uh, and so, it's uh, that's partially why I wanted to come in and talk about community is because, because of those things. Last week, we had such a strong response on those words, those feelings. And really, I think what's happening is we're starting to really realize how hungry we are for meaningful community, meaningful relationships. So what's been the hardest part about not having a community around you in this time? Feeling isolated, what else? I think it's hard not being able to gather with someone, maybe because of fear or you feel like for me, sometimes I might feel intimidated mm -hmm. to like, uh, like on Wednesday nights, I always felt intimidated to go usually because I had no one to go with me mm -hmm. and I didn't want to go alone. And I felt, or, well, I don't know, right now it's kind of hard and you, we just need someone to talk to in these times mm -hmm. to share <laughs> yeah share it's kind of struggles. Right. yeah share struggles yeah it's tough um and, and uh i feel that too like it's weird to be like 
it's a big church, right? BT is a big church. I mean, it's it's an amazing thing because we see all of these all of these awesome things happening in the life of BT, uh, where we get to celebrate. Uh, man, I forget what the number was, but it's a lot of salvations this year, um, a lot of baptisms this year. Like it shows us that God has continued to do amazing, amazing work, um, and we could be surrounded by so many people, but still feel so kind of stuck, right? Like kind of like, man, I'm not ready to talk. Like the way that Zakai said it is, it's over. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, man, like that's that's something we feel. It's like, it's hard to, it's hard to have these kind of, these meaningful relationships. And um, what does community give us though that helps alleviate some of that feeling? Just the feeling of being surrounded by people you know mm -hmm. and surrounded by people that you've done stuff with. Like, like, uh, experience mm -hmm. values you have the same experience you have the same values so when you like do the stuff with them you experience the same thing mm -hmm. you know the other person's like on board of what you want to do yeah so it just makes you feel like surrounded on and like on the same page and yeah. it gives you like comfort knowing yeah. that you're on the same page with someone else right yeah. by like-minded people doing like-minded things. There you go, right? Like I think, and I think that's the key, is right? Because like we can, we can feel super, super alone, even in a crowded room, right? Um, but what makes us feel alone sometimes is not so much that there's, like, how am I saying this? Like we can feel alone in a crowded room, right? Um, but we could feel more accepted with one person that just shares so much of our life, like that we share so much of our life with. And it may come back to what we've said, right? With the shared values, the, the shared characteristics, the shared shared hobbies and, and all that, and that's good. Um, but it, what's important, as I think, is what meaningful community means to us is that we have somebody we know has our back, right? They have our best interests at heart. And, and they know the same goes for them, that we have their back, right? Like, I think that's, that's kind of the big difference between just like a casual friend, like the people that you know, like kind of casually from school or like you interact with on social media or like from games or whatever, versus the people you know that are gonna be like, hey, Zakai, like I know, I know that we're playing this game right now, but like, do I really need to talk? Can you give me like five minutes after everybody gets off? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and like, as weird as that sounds, that happens because we're, we, we're hungry for more than just a shared experience. Uh, we want to be heard, right? We're like, we want to belong. We want to be valued. And this season of life has made it really hard to find those things. So my question, I guess, to kind of move on or to, to move through that is, I mean, have y'all seen God at work in your lives even though you haven't got, I mean, uh, let me ask the question again. Um, how have you seen God at work in your relationships, even though you can't be around a lot of a lot of people? Okay, I'll go. Um, so like with not going <clears throat> to school and not seeing all of these things happening around, all these little cliques or groups that you see, all these conversations you hear, all these rumors, drama that you're surrounded by. For me, it's been a really big help getting out of that, being at home. Although it is lonely, and although it is hard not to talk to someone about like how you feel or if something good has happened in your life, even that. Um, but it's it comforts me knowing that like Jesus is always by my side. He's always he's my rock. He's my refugee. My safe place to go to in good times and bad times. Yeah. He's he's my main community, honestly, yeah. throughout all these times. Yeah. That's really good. I'm gonna pick up on something you said there because I feel like everything you said is super rich and like I feel like I, I just wanna kinda grab hold of it. So I'm gonna do my best to remember it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the first thing is is you mentioned clicks, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean I'll ask you, what what's the difference between a community and a click? Uh, like an exclusive place and then like a place like anyone can go to. Okay. I think click is more okay, like that's good. more well-known people that you can kind of be more comfortable with. Okay. I hear y'all. I want to make sure that we're kind of on the same page, right? <laughs> like you said, it's exclusive place versus a place where anybody could go. Which one's a click? Which one's a community? 
click exclusive community okay. everywhere. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so here's the question then. Like, w should the church be more of a click or more of a community? More Com of a community. So here's another hard question. Y'all ready? <laughs> Do you feel, and this is like honest feelings, right? Like this isn't trying to blame anybody. This isn't trying to like, I, I told you already, like, I value your honesty. I believe God will speak through this. And so I want you all to tell me what you think. Do you think that the church is uh, more often a community or more often a clique? In your experience. And like, everybody's experience is different, right? So <laughs> Community. But I've seen churches like a uh -huh. clique. Cool. Yeah. For me, it's been a click. Yeah. How dare you? Now, can you imagine? <laughs> imagine? Sorry. Like, no, no, no. I'm serious, but that's what I want to hear. I want to yeah, hear it. Like, and, like what I said before, I feel intimidated sometimes uh -huh. to even go up to someone to like maybe go up to like you or yeah. a pastor or a leader. Uh, obviously, like I don't know them yeah. very intimately, so mm -hmm. I kind of feel like mm, I get a little nervous. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel like it's more for a click for me. And I wish it was more community. Yeah. So just so you hear my heart, me too. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, not, not that I feel like it's a click, but like one of my big goals is um, that BT students like they gather together would really be a place where everybody belongs. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so I, I'll flesh that out a little bit more later, but I want to hear what Noah's got to say. Because I saw Noah's wheels turning. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he's got a lot of thoughts going on. I feel like it's more of a community. Like yeah. I feel like everybody at Sherryland is like so welcoming and yeah. like, we, like, all of us can just talk about yeah. anything. Well, I'm going to say this, too. Sherilyn's amazing, bro. <laughs> I tell... So, I mean, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, I hope you don't mind me telling you this, but Pastor Juan is Noah's dad, right? So, <laughs> Pastor Juan from, from Sherry. And uh, so, I've had the opportunity to go uh, preach, I think, like, three or four times. And every time I get to go, like, it's one of the most welcoming places on the, on the planet. Like it's, and I've told you, your dad this, I've told uh, Pastor Joaquin this too, like it, it is so encouraging to get to show up to that church because right? people genuinely love on you, right? And that's an inspiration, right? To see like, dude, they're, they're doing a lot that's right. And so like what I was saying too, is like I want so badly for BT students to be a place for people to belong. And it's not because uh, we want more numbers. I mean, like, it's because we, we believe that, that God's entrusted the greatest message on the planet to us. Like, like there's a hope for people who are hurting. And, and if we have that, and if God has called people into that, like we shouldn't be, nobody should walk into our, our student gatherings or our events and be like, nah, man, those people, they don't want me around. Like I would, that would, that would hurt my heart so, so bad. Uh, and so those are things that like I actively want want to go after. So anyway, we're not here to talk, hear me talk about all that stuff. Uh, but I think it's important to understand that because the reality is like we're all craving, uh, we're all craving community. Yeah. yeah. Like we need to know that there's the people who are going to have our backs, yeah. and that whenever Colin has an issue, he can go to Zakai. And Zakai's gonna have my best interest at heart, and he's gonna pray for me, and he's gonna he's gonna fight for me. You know what I mean? Like not fight. Don't don't fist fight anybody for me. All right. Uh, if I if I get into an issue and I gotta fight, you don't don't back me up. All right. That's that's on me. No, but I mean like fight for me and like wanting what's best for me. Like he's got your back. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm talking a whole bunch, and I'm sorry. Um, I've been like my church back home. Mm -hmm. it's, Where are you from? Virginia. Okay, well, Virginia. <laughs> but it's really like it was really, really like the students was really, really good. Like good. we had an amazing pastor. Um they he just did every like he would take us to uh Christian concerts. Mm -hmm. We did uh Winterfest. Mm -hmm. We went to Winter Jam Winterfest. Yeah. It was just a family. It didn't even feel like we were just going there on uh Wednesdays and right. Just a place to show up. Like, it was just Ooh. family. It was really, really good. I like that. Yeah. So it's not a place to show You said it's not a place to show yeah, up. Yeah, it's just not a place to show up. Or it's not like a place where you just come and talk to your friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like, if you had a problem, you had people to talk to. If you had, like, anything, you mm -hmm. could just ask, like, your friends or just... It was just so open also, it was mm -hmm. very open and everybody was just on the same page and it just felt amazing. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I know, right? Ah, that feels good. 
Like, and, and I, I think that, like, so let me ask you, why did that mean so much to you? Because I've never had anything like that before. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, I didn't have it, obviously, because I wasn't in middle school yet. Mm -hmm. But, like, it was also, like, a big thing, because when you make that middle school transition and you get to be with the big kids and stuff, you're all, like, also having a good youth group, it's, like, double times the best thing ever. Yeah. Because you get the transition and you get, like, an amazing youth group. Yeah. It's, like, really, really yeah. fun. But it just meant a lot because it was just a good place for me to just come there and say, hey, I didn't have a great day, and I'm going to tell you why I didn't, and hopefully you can help me out. So would y'all say, like, being a uh uh, try to find the word for this, or the, the way to lay it out. But um, like a community is going to be a place where you want to be heard, right? Where you want to be valued, you want to belong. What'd you say? Accepted. Accepted, right? And acceptance is a weird word in church, right? Like, uh, well, that's a different conversation. But like. Uh, <laughs> But, but here, here's kind of where I think, what I think we need to try to kind of grab hold of is, I mean, the invitation that, that Jesus gives us in the gospel is open to who? <laughs> right? Any, anyone who believes, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah. anybody who believes, like, come on in. And, and that's the way the church ought to be, too. And, and uh, one of the things I love about the community that we see um, in the Bible and there's not like a real I'm not gonna go to one passage and say this is where we learn everything about the church or anything like that but we see a lot man Jesus is high priestly prayer in John 17 he's he's praying to God the Father right? Jesus the Son the God the Son Jesus is praying to God the Father right before all of crucifixion resurrection and he's praying and he and he prays in this like, intimate prayer, he says that his prayer is that uh, his people would be one as the Father and Son are one, right? So the Trinity is kind of represented there, right? Like Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we know that. Um, real brief theology lesson, that's that's the theology of, of God, right? I mean, it's it's that, that, that uh, God is one in three persons is how we talk about that, and I can't explain it. Neither can you, so we're not gonna try right now, uh, but mm -hmm. we can try another time. But there is something I wanna draw uh, that's important there, is that God is, God is a community, right? God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one, but three persons. And his, Jesus' prayer is that we would be one in that same way. All right? and, and what I, I wrote down earlier, that's why I'm on that. Like there's a lot that we see um, that's represented in the scripture about, uh, about God's God's community or God's God's nature, and uh, one of the things I read in the book said that throughout the scriptures, the Trinity, right, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is seen expressing unique and affirming kind of relationship toward one another. They are seen enjoying one another. We see that in John uh, Genesis one twenty six. They are seen encouraging one another. We see in Matthew three seventeen. They are seen supporting. Uh, one another seen in John 14 25 they are seen loving one another mark 9 7 they are seen deferring to one another John 14 10 and glorifying one another John 17 1 and so what this pat this book goes on to say it says if you get the picture that they have an uh, if you get the picture that they have an ongoing mutual admiration uh, society you're right basically what he's saying is is uh, what you see there is that they're a community they're, they're building each other up they're always having each other's backs. And then Jesus' prayer is that we would have the same. And uh, the church needs to be a place where people people can can come in. Now, we talked all the way around the issue I brought up earlier. It's like we've been in a season of quarantine where we don't have access to a community like that. Uh, maybe we do, right, through community groups and things like that. But it's been hard to find community. So let me ask you guys this. Um, how, can, how can the church be a good community for people who are longing for community right now. Because mm. we're all stuck at home. That's a tough question. It is a tough question. But I feel like just appealing, like mm -hmm. just appealing, very welcoming. And 
I don't know, appealing, very welcoming, and just trying your best to just mm -hmm. being clear about we're a accepting church, we're a welcoming church, mm -hmm. and we love new people that want to come in here and be a part yeah. of this family. There's a VIP. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. VIP. And mean it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. We can say all day long from the pulpit, you're very important to us, but if we don't, if we don't reach out, yeah. if we make people feel like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to talk to them, like, there's an appealing there, right? But we got we got to live up to it, right? Mm -hmm. And you use another word that I think is crazy over, uh, it's not overused, but it's underestimated is the word. It, what did I say, underestimated? <laughs> <laughs> crazy underrated. <laughs> you use the word that's crazy underrated, and that's welcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can be the most welcoming people on the planet, um, but if people don't see that, or you used appealing too, right? But like, um, welcoming is really important because if a stranger walks in and they see the little pockets of clicks mm -hmm. and always just the clicks doing their thing, they're not going to feel like they belong, you know? And so one of the things that Jesus also goes on to say uh, in that prayer is he says that he, he prays for the people, um, the people who would join the community because of the community's witness exactly how it laid out but the idea is because the community of God because the people of God were effective in sharing the hope of the world that we have in Jesus in Jesus that we pray that that these people would also come in and love each other you know, like it's a really powerful statement like community is essential to us yeah by God's design we need each other and and by God's character we ought to encourage each other we ought to love each other. We ought to defer to each other. We ought to uh, build each other up. We ought to correct each other in love, right? Like the whole goal is that together we'll grow right under Jesus, right? And uh, that's huge. So we need each other. So when I think about BT students and what that looks like, um, I, I think that as you start to grab hold of that, that truth in scripture, um, and you embody that as we start to gather again. Um, BT students uh, needs to be a place where people know that they can come and heal sometimes. They can be heard and they can grow, right? Yeah. Y'all have any other thoughts on community? What was the last question you asked? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know I why, but like, when I think of cliques, I like, I always think of like, okay, like a scene in like a high school, mm -hmm. a high school movie where they're just like, all like the scientists, yeah, 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 yeah. the, all the nerds, bad people, the, yeah. yeah, and then the person is just like, what am I gonna choose? I'm yeah. so nervous. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one I'm gonna be in. Yeah. But if you're a community, you could just hop on in and then. Man. Just... <laughs> That's why you're in here, dude. That's good. That's really good because there's room for everybody. Right. right. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to, you don't have to I mean you need to behave, right, under Jesus, right? And his his boundaries and laws, but uh that's huge, man. Where it needs to be a place where people aren't intimidated to walk in because everybody looks the same. Yeah. If we all look the same, I, I worry about what our witness really looks like, you know. Man, that was good, bro. You wanna preach next week? <laughs> That's good. So my question, I don't remember what it was. What um, was it? How can we get like <laughs> So I did this last <laughs> week too, where I like I ask a question and then I'm like, dude, what did I ask? <laughs> um yeah, but the, the I think the goal was like how how do we Like how can we join community with everything going on? Yeah. And he said appealing, yeah, welcoming. And okay. I was gonna add on that the Zoom meetings after uh -huh. the service are it's like a really good way to just come together. Yeah. Do you guys do like boys individually mm -hmm. and girls? Like, yeah. And that's more comfortable for me. Yeah. And it's a really good way to just be there, hear one another, mm -hmm. hear your opinions on the service. Yeah. It's community coming yeah. together, sharing yeah. the same values. That's what I meant. Yep. <laughs> if you guys got nothing else, I think that's a really good. Yeah, that's a good point exit strategy also to say hey community groups are happening right now mm -hmm. um so not the way we thought but yeah 
Yeah. I actually tried to invite my friend too. Tell him, come on, bro. Like, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. It needs to be an inviting place, too. Yeah, because it feels so good to, like, share so, stuff yeah. with your age group. Because mm -hmm. I'm an only child, so mm -hmm. I don't get to talk to, like, a sibling or anything mm -hmm. that has that could have the same things I'm going that's through. A good point. In school, in life, in anything. So having, a, like, a, you can jo join the Zoom call after the service, yeah. it's like you have... Plenty of siblings or right. pl plenty, uh, plenty of people to talk to about your experience. Yeah. It's, it's cool. That's good, man. Oh, that makes me feel so good. Because <laughs> it's a challenge, man. Like, and I tell, I tell parents this all the time. Like, I, I get it, you know, because they're like, well, when, when is, like, how are y'all doing church? If I'm, like, talking to new, new people, I'm like, well, it's online. And I immediately see the, the parents like, man, like, my, my kids on a t like tablet or their computer all day long in classes mm -hmm. and now you're asking them to sit through another 30 minute lesson and then join a 30 to 45 minute community group on a, on another screen like it's too much you know but there's life there right there's life there, there there's there's community right and it's helpful for us because it's helping us shape and grow uh, the way that, that Paul writes it a couple times we're growing in maturity and stature right we can't grow alone. And uh, I think by design, God has uniquely equipped his church um, to help each other grow. And so, so with that said, I'll wrap it up and I'll break my rule. I'll look at the camera and I'll say, uh, we're gonna jump into our community groups now. Uh, at eight o'clock, uh, we're going to have our <laughs> Zoom meetings. So if you want to text me your name and your grade, to 956-238-3733. Uh, we'll get you set up with a code uh, to jump into the appropriate uh, Zoom community group. Uh, and, and this is what's amazing about community. Uh, well, there's so much amazing. We talked about it all, so I'm not gonna rehash it. But uh, starting next week, uh, November 4th, we will be regathering in person uh, for our worship services oh. on uh, at our Sherryland campus at McGowan for middle school and high school uh, and our Alice campus. And so we pray uh, that you will make it because uh, it's going to be amazing. I'll tell you all this. If your parents are worried about it, tell them to hit up bt.church forward slash students and they will find all of the procedures that we're doing uh, to make sure that you are taken care of in this season of uh, this virus going crazy on, in the world. We're doing what we can to protect you. Now, uh, we're excited to see you. I cannot wait to be back with students. And so I'm fired up about it. It's going to be awesome. So uh, 6.30 at those campuses, we'll be back in person. But for now, we're jumping into our community groups uh, at 8 o'clock. So text that number, 956-238-3733, and I'll see you there. L allow me right now to just pray for everybody. Thank you guys for being here. Let's just pray. Just ask God to, to use this time to, to build everybody. All right? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, God. I thank you especially for the lives of these students, Lord, who have been able to come in and share their heart. Lord, I pray that uh, you would continue to use them uh, to make just a massive impact for your kingdom. Lord, I pray uh, that your church would be built up um, through the voices and the hearts of this generation. Lord, I pray that your community would come back stronger than ever, that your church would really rise to the occasion, Lord, to communicate the hope that we have in you, Lord. For anybody that's hurting, I pray that they would have a home at BT Students. Lord, for anybody who is feeling alone, I pray that they would have a home at BT Students. Lord, for anybody that is just struggling and just confused about it all, Lord, I pray that BT Students would be the place where they could come uh, and connect with you and connect with your people in a meaningful and transformative way. Lord, we're trusting that the best is in front of us because you're the one in the lead. And God, we thank you for that, Lord. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys. We'll see y'all.